All right. So good evening, everyone. My name is Gemma Ilum. I'm a professional host since 2017 for various social events and outside hosting. I'm an HR practitioner and entrepreneur helping people to be in business for themselves. Once again, my name is Gemma and I will be your host for tonight's webinar. And before we begin, if any of you have questions regarding our discussion for tonight, don't hesitate to send them to us by commenting on the comment section of whatever social platform you may be in, whether you're watching us live on Facebook or on YouTube. So just ask away and we'll be there to cater your questions to our guest speaker for tonight. Once again, welcome to the live webinar series of esme.ph an e-learning marketplace for Filipino professionals where one can develop relevant and in-demand skills through masterclasses in different fields of learning. Again, if you want to learn more about us, feel free to check our website at www.sv.ph. And for those who are watching on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn, feel free to share the link to the stream to people who you think might be interested in our topic for tonight. So, We've got a very, very exciting topic for tonight with our special guest. And we would like to remind all of our guests, all of those who are watching live online, that this webinar is in partnership with the ASEAN Youth Organization, an ASEAN-approved nonprofit organization that spreads awareness of ASEAN to over 200 million young people in Southeast Asia. And this webinar is also brought to you by the Rotary Club of Alabang Madrigal Business Park. Once again... Our topic for tonight is all about sustainable tourism's effort in Surf Town La Union. Wow, that's very exciting. And furthermore, we will be immersing ourselves with talks about voluntarism and community work with regard to the pre preservation of one of the most treasured and romanticized, that's for all of you couples out there, I'm sure you're all watching, the tourist hotspots in the Philippines. And our guest speaker for tonight is a young social entrepreneur and communications professional all the way from San Juan La Union. With a degree in European Studies and Secondary Education from the De La Salle University in Manila, she uses her skills and knowledge to fuel the passion in support of educating the general public about the preservation of marine and terrestrial biodiversity in her region. She also involves herself in community and volunteer work under numerous private, non-government, and public organizations to further support her advocacies as an environmental and tourism planner. To date, she's a communication volunteer of the Coastal Underwater Resource Management Actions, La Union's Province Ambassadors for Feed Incorporated, and the Chairman of La Union Conventions and Visitors Bureau, and the elected President of San Juan Resort, Restaurant, Hotel, and Association. Wow! Our guest today have really a lot of, a lot of things in her sleeve right now. So, before I introduce our guest speaker for today, let's all watch this short video.
Wow, that was a very, very exciting video of what La Union has to offer to the world. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to introduce to you our guest speaker for tonight. Let's all welcome, maybe with a thumbs up or with, with a clap emoji on your social media accounts. Please help me welcome the founder of the La Union Soul Movement, Miss Tina Antonio. Hi, Tina. Good evening. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I'm sobrang kinakabang ako ngayon. No, it's okay. Just, um, just relax. But, We're gonna uh, talk a lot thank about you. La Union tonight. Thank you for this opportunity, um, for giving us this channel to share our story here in La Union. We've done a lot. Um, so I'm so excited. Kinakabahan ako, but I'm so excited to share it with everyone. Yeah, all right. So mm -hmm. I think, Tina, we should start with uh, really getting to know more about sustainable tourism and, of course, uh, La Union. So could you tell us a mm -hmm. little bit more info about it? Um, so for... For La Union, we started um, a movement called La Union Soul, which is basically, it started with just three people, which I will share with you in a bit. Um, now, what we wanted to do was balance both um, economics, making business, but also uh, try to balance it with environmental sustainability. So we did want to play in the long run, like make the business boom, but with environmental sustainability, so it would be longer. And that's why we created this movement because one of the problems that we faced were uh, trash coming from the ocean, coming from the rivers. It would always be on the beach. Um, uh, we also found out that La Union, uh, my backyard, is actually a turtle nesting ground. Um, mm. And turtles are called keystone species, which I will be presenting to you in a bit. So those were some of the things that inspired us to create this movement. And it's not just, it wasn't just one person, it was a whole community working together. Um, and that's why a lot of people, a lot of uh, friends who, who try to stay here for a few months, they start during the ECQ, they started moving here. So um, a lot of them chose to make La Union their home. Um, some of them, I have, I have a friend who is from Austria, Laura, and she has been working here with us for the past seven years. Hindi na siya bumalik. But she would go back home for um, Christmas, but most of the year she was here in La Union and we were doing projects together. So those were some of the things that we've done. Wow, that's very exciting to hear. And of course, I'm sure a lot of people really, just like what you mentioned, really fell in love with La Union, especially during yes. the quarantine period. That's why they, they really moved in there. And of course, they really mm -hmm. decided to make it a part of their life, La Union, to be really a part of their soul. So could you tell us um, a little bit more of also the current state of uh, La Union right now? Um, so for La Union, um, we're still close to tourists mm -hmm. uh, from Manila. So we are open to tourists from Region 1, which is Ilocos Region. So we're open to Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, um, La Union, Pangasinan, and Baguio. Um, mm -hmm. However, so that's for tourists. Um, we still can't accept them at the moment. Um, but for business purposes, though, um, there are some towns in La Union who are already accepting um, guests for official business purposes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But of course, you have to remember you need all your permits, especially the negative swab test. So that's oh, one of yeah. the requirements. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I think all of us would agree that once we go to La Union and we want to enjoy the scenery and everything there, safety is a priority all the time, yes. especially during this time of pandemic. So I think, um, uh, Tina, you would uh, you have a slide that you want to share to our um, uh, guest, our guest for tonight regarding yes. sustainable tourism in La Union. Mm -hmm. I've already shared my screen. So yeah. Okay. Game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so let's start. Um, I'd actually wanted to share our story. It's always been a team effort for this program, but let me go on. So La Union is far more than just a fame type. Um, fa it's sorry, the La Union is far more than just its fame title of surfing capital of the the north. The region's vibrant, energetic community and ecologically diverse landscape are all part and parcel of the province's identity. However, because of La Union's growing popularity, the latter has come under threat from the rapid development, pollution, and a variety of other factors that require a timely response. La Union responds to La Union's call for environmental preservation. More than just a catchy name and a state of being, La Union's soul is the collective voice of the residents, the townspeople, and those who've come to love the place enough to call it home. It represents well-thought-out eco-projects, activities, and future-looking plans. It is both the consciousness and the essence of a co community that wishes to protect its coastline and ensure the area's future for the years and generations to come. By no means is La Union Seoul the first party to work towards promoting sustainable development or the preservation of the environment. For years, La Union's residents and groups have been living in harmony with nature and fighting at every turn to secure their home's future. La Union Seoul is the representation of a truly united effort by the community, from residents to business owners, from artists to researchers, and includes a variety of groups such as the La Union Surf Club, SIF Care, LUCVB, Korma, Feed Inc., and it all starts with one egg. Or perhaps a few thousand eggs. The sea turtle is La Union's living manifestation of the cause and the movement, using part of the fifth longest shoreline in the world as its nesting grounds, the sea turtle is both beneficiary and a proof of a balanced ecosystem and a sustainable way of life for the La Union coastline. Saving these turtles will have far-reaching effects on the La Union ecosystem. These turtles feed on the marine sponge population, which would otherwise dominate coral reef communities and disrupt their growth. They graze on seagrass beds, which are the main habitat and breeding grounds of many species. The grazing keeps the grass short and maintains their health. Their unhatched eggs nourish the otherwise arid beach dunes, allowing vegetation to flourish and stabilize the terrain. They can even consume hundreds of pounds of jellyfish every day, representing the top jellyfish predator. Without the turtles, reef growth would slow, the beaches would gradually erode, and the seas would be unsafe for human activity due to, je to the jellyfish blooms. Unfortunately, in recent years, life hasn't been that easy nor kind for these majestic creatures. In 2017 alone, there has been an alarming decline in the number of turtle hatchlings accounted for along La Union's coastline. From more than 6,000 hatchlings per year in 2017, the most recent reports account only for 1,600 hatchlings. 
an estimated two years of continuous decline in population. The factors that have contributed to and hasten this environmental threat include the improper disposal of trash on the beaches, the loud music and bright lights from resorts, hotels, and events during the month of shore nesting, as well as the questionable environmental practices of neighboring business and establishments in the area. Such an increase in hatchlings and sightings of these creatures creatures will be the one biggest signs that La Union Soul is thriving and making a difference. So La Union Soul empowers different communities and groups with opportunities that allow them to spread awareness and promote and participate in eco-friendly tourism practices. Every shareholder is given a role that plays to the strengths, making use of multi-sensory branding to capture indeed the La Union Soul, its food, music, people, and culture. So the, La Un the soul of La Union is a story of its people, its culture, and its ecology, all working together in harmony and mutual respect. So we actually invite everyone to be a part of this story and a part of the La Union Soul. Okay, so I guess Tina, our guests would also agree that you really gave a very, very great um, information about the sustainable tourism in La Union and of course, La Union Soul. And of course, I really love the, those facts that you presented about the turtles and how really they can contribute to the ecology of La Union. So yeah. as far as I'm concerned, uh, Tina, of course, you have different organizations that you're involved in in La Union. So mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you, what inspired you to partake in those organizations that you're currently in? Um, when I moved to La Union, so you can actually show the next slide. Um, I moved here in 2015 and I just got out of the corporate world. So I used to work for one of the biggest telcos in the Philippines and mm -hmm. I was really burnt out. Um, I hated the traffic in Manila. Um, <laughs> it wasted so much of everyone's time. And I just felt like I was running after something but not moving at all. Mm -hmm. So it felt like I was stuck. So I had the privilege and the opportunity to move to La Union because my family is actually from here. So my father's mm -hmm. side is from La Union. So I'm the fifth generation um from my father's side to stay here um and then on my first year which was 2015 i moved here june 2015 um i didn't have friends i was new in town and um i was always at flotsam and jetsam because it was my neighbor we were we we're basically neighbors okay. so they were just beside me. So I just go there because there was nothing to do. There were not much guests back in 2015. There would mm -hmm. only be guests during the weekend. So we had a lot of time on our hands to both manage the business and to pursue other things. And that's when these guys, um, since I was new, they dragged me into a Kurma workshop. So Kurma stands for Coastal Underwater Research Management Actions. They are our local turtle, sea turtle experts um, and specialists. So uh, we went to a workshop and then I met um, uh, Toby Tamayo. He's uh, the founder of Kurma together with his daughter, Sachi Tamayo. And um, in 20... 11 they founded Korma and they've been trying to educate the community ever since then the problem was the pickup was quite slow because they're very technical experts so they knew they knew the science of it but mm -hmm. it was a bit difficult to sell it to people like sell the idea of taking care of these sea turtles to people so when I came in um, and attended just one workshop and met this wonderful gentleman, um, I learned about the sea turtles. I identified the weakness of um, the program. 
And I decided to volunteer because there was nothing else to do anyway um, during weekdays. Um, so it was funny because my weekends were my weekdays that time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I had five days off a week. So wow. I was looking for some something to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we started, um, so in 2015, I, I, uh, I understood that they had a problem with, um, with really marketing, which, uh, which is a special skill that I've learned in okay. corporate that I actually can use to help this advocacy. And so I was trying to figure out a way to, to help them. And it didn't make me sleep for... So I started August 15, and I was attending multiple workshops um, with them. And then by 2016 in January, um, I had created uh, basically a slide of presentation like the one I showed you, but it was more simple because I just had an idea out and I was like thinking about it. And then I completed the presentation uh, March of 2016. Wow. So in March of 2016, I completed the presentation and showed it to La Union Conventions and Visitors Bureau and the San Juan Resort Restaurant Hotel Association. Take note, I was just six months in La Union. No one, no one knew me. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know what to do. And um, these people, uh, the people shown here, were actually the first ones who pushed me to actually do things, make things happen. And for 2016, after I presented um, the La Union Soul idea to both, uh, to two tourism organizations, we started small. So we started with pocket events. We had beach cleanups every day. We used social media posted on Instagram of our usual um usual catch of trash which is seen on the first photo and on the left and then we also started together with um l union and fought some ridge to reef community market which is what inspired the ridge and reef a uh, program of the dot region one um this year so um it was all because of uh, Toby Tamayo. So he was my mentor, and I, I thank him a lot for teaching me about this. Um, we also had like lifeguard um, seminars. We had um, bands playing. We learned about doing the actual um, turtle pawikan patrol. Um, mm -hmm. How to do it? How to uh, move nests? How to see? where to find the nest and then it was then that the idea um was being um accepted by certain events like for example surfing break which is one of the biggest events in la union um started having the pawikan pledge so it was to basically inform people that there was a there was turtles nesting here because during this time 2016 even government officials um even locals didn't know that the area was a turtle nesting site um we also partnered with um i had friends uh i i still have them by the way i have friends <laughs> who i worked with in corporate um uh, we made social media day every year um, that that was tweet up manila and um, for 2016 they brought social media day so that's celebrated every J june 29 or the last saturday of the month uh the last saturday of the month of june and they went all here um to celebrate social media day and to use um, the social media, the platform to do social good, which was um, wow. having a voice in environment. And mm -hmm. those were just a few of the partners in 2016 that we had. By 2017, 
we built more partners. So that's when Havas Media Ortega Group joined us. And they, they were the ones who created the, um, the slides I earlier showed you. So they took my idea, packaged it in such a way that everyone would understand it. Um, and it was easier to digest. Yeah. And, um, and that was the beginning of it. Then we partnered with uh, then um, DOT Regional Director Martin Adamore. Um, mm -hmm. He was actually the father of Surfing Break. And Surfing Break at this point was in its 11th or 12th year in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, we also partnered with uh, then businessman, Jeff Ortega, now he's the regional director for DOT1. We partnered with Rafi Janisha, who is um, one of the owners of Circle Hostel. And he's actually one of the people who push for the plastic solution, where mm -hmm. they use, uh, they put uh, plastics into water bottles and make it into eco bricks for uh, construction materials. Um, he also has, uh, Rafi has um, the ITAS. So he helps the ITAS uh, and teach them how to do ag agriculture in Zambales. So that's one of his projects. And then these two lovely ladies, um, Anne and Diane, are part of Feed Inc. And they do um, greening. So they've been planting indigenous trees around the country for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years. It's long because even her mom was doing it before. So mm -hmm. can't remember the exact exact date when they started. And um, Celso um, is also part of it. He's an environmental scientist from um, the State University here in La Union. And of course, Laura. So Laura's a marine biologist. Uh, she's from Austria and uh, she's a coral specialist and she's wow. been um uh forcing me no she's been teaching me and trying to change my lifestyle of um having zero waste going trying to go more vegetarian but um does it work on me but i've learned a lot from laura and she has been an integral part of the community. In fact, she actually made La Union Soul bigger. So on 2016, we did pocket events. By 2017, we, um, Laura, this is her brainchild, it was sustainably stoked. So she tried to bring in surfers, um, the local surfers on board because I, I didn't surf. Um, I'm an indoor type of person. So um, so I didn't really do athletic things. But uh, this lady, uh, this is her um, doing the coral planting. She was really pushing everyone to make this uh, program happen, to have less trash on the uh, seashores, um, to have less straws. So we started with something really basic. We started with straws. Um, for 2017, uh, we partnered with the La Union Conventions and Visitors Bureau, and they adopted um, La Union Soul in their program. And through them, we were able to fundraise, um, I think, around 30,000 pesos. And those th that 30,000 pesos, we, uh, we used to partner with Straw Wars Philippines. And what we did was we asked Straw Wars Philippines, so they're another group, um, to create uh, materials for us. So they created table standees, posters, similar to the first um, picture on the left at the bottom. Um, okay. They made materials for everyone. And these materials were shared to all of the establishments in hopes that we can help the establishments educate their guests about using less plastics and particularly um, taking out straws. Um, we also did like art uh, murals at our wall. Uh, we did uh, mangrove, mangrove planting. It was the first time we actually taught people how to do mangrove planting. And mm -hmm. um, if you go back 
to the presentation I showed you earlier about um, how one of the reasons why sea turtles weren't nesting as often was because of the loud music and uh, see loud music, the white lights on the beachfront. So um, we came up, uh, La Union Conventions and Visitors Bureau came up with a another event called Pagwanawanan Festival. Pagwanawanan means baluarte or um, a guardian in English. So Pagwanawanan is in Ilocano. And basically, we wanted to be guardians of the environment. Hello? Yeah, I guess yeah, we'll okay. hear you. Okay, so um, with Pagwanawanan, we shifted instead of having a beach party we uh we did pocket events in multiple venues we had art workshops we had we even had a rock battle at the uh, a rap battle at the san fernando plaza a art wow. exhibit film screening a cosplay party a, a cosplay a convention um and uh, comic convention. So we made all those events um, for a span of one month every Saturday. Uh, we made an art festival. It was our uh, attempt to make the events within establishments. And that was the goal was to try to follow, um, try to have a model of a uh, Pawikan friendly events that would be both um, recreational, enjoyable to our tourists. Mm -hmm. And by 2018, so we started with that. By 2018, we had more people on board. Um, since we were working with the artists, we were already working with the La Union Surf Club at that point. Uh, this is them. That's how many they are. Kulang pa sila dyan. We were working with the artists. Um, with the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Um, and this is Sir Chit Asignacion, uh, one of our consultants and also our secretary for the San Juan Resort Res Restaurant Association. He is one of the owners of Tamawan Village. Um, and it was through him that we made the second year of Pagwanawanan bigger. We also started partnering with Link. So it's called the Lupon ng Mga Individual na Nangangalaga sa kalis, kal, Kalikasan in Tagalog. Um, and they were, these are the first officers that I met. So um, we were working with a group of uh, adolescents and teens at that time. It was quite inspiring. And we made the pocket events even bigger by this time um we celebrated uh earth day um, and then we made murals from echo bricks together with circle hostel and the plastic solutions we even had theater actors during that day um the biggest events in la union which was a uh, summer break surfing break and pagwanawanan um, tried to incorporate uh, more environmentally sound um, innovations to make their events more logistically manageable on the environment side. And of course, Laura had another brainchild. Um, it was called Sustainable Palenque. And what we did is we did a guerrilla environmental um, event. Nice. Just... Uh, at the San Fernando Public Market, where mm -hmm. um, our friends, uh, first it was Laura and then Mark, uh, mm -hmm. we rented a few stalls to try to um, have people change their plastic bags to echo bags. So we had echo bags, bags on hand and we started giving them out. Um, of course, the gorilla thing, we did ask permission from um, uh, back then, I think, one of the mayors of uh, San Fer the mayor of San Fernando. So we did ask permission. So it wasn't truly gorilla. We did ask permission. And they actually supported it. 
So we during the uh, sustainable palenque, we also had um, the Link Kids with us, and the Link Kids made a thesis study while Laura and uh, basically team. Um, Team Suki, we called them. So they were the ones selling and educating people. Um, Team Link, which were the kids, were were doing research. So they went to the three um, three exits and uh, entrance and exit of the public market and started recording how many people were going out of the public market with pla- plastics on hand and how many plastics were they f- there for one minute. So they were just recording and making studies and they tried to do like 30 minutes of it. They were just recording and tallying how many plastics were going out of the market. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, um, we studied it and decided to create a, a more, what a bit, more better approach or more deliberate approach is the exact word. So a more deliberate approach to actually um, take care of the plastic problem. So after that, we had the second Paguanan Wanan Festival and it was both art and music. So it was there. Um, It was also the second time we um, tightened the model of having an art festival within the establishments. And we did it on September 14 to 16. So turtle nesting season starts from September and ends uh, at around March. Um, And for September, we did this as a welcoming to remind people that, hey, the sea turtles are coming home um, and are coming to nest. Because the interesting thing about sea turtles um, the species that we have here is called an olive ridley sea turtle, is that when it hatches, it goes to the ocean. And when it's time for them to nest, after 20 years, they go back to where they nest, they were born. So they're like overseas Filipino workers or our balik bayans. So it's, it, it was quite an inspiring thing because it meant that every time they come to our shores, 20 years have passed. And so, so many things with development, so many things can happen in 20 years. So we made the story more impactful during 2018. But during 2018, we also had one big problem, and it was... Uh, 670, no, it's a 650 uh, coal-fired power plant. And it was to be built on um, in Luna. So Luna is a town, two, two towns away from San Juan. It is exactly around 20 kilometers in radius from my house. I actually... I actually measured it when I found out about this project. And they were planning to operate it on the first quarter of 2022. So at that time in 2018, we were already driving the momentum and we were already getting so much support. Um, I'll show you the results later. And then this problem happens. Uh, We found about it um, I think end of 2017 when they had a public hearing in Luna. And there were a lot of people, um, a handful of people who were against it. So that only means that if there are people who contest it, then it has to go through a proper process. So um, let me tell you about Luna. So this is Luna La Union. Luna is around 40 minutes away from us. A by road. Um, And one of the main attractions of Luna is its pebble beach. So it's known to have uh, pebbles instead of sand in their beaches. There's also um, one of my favorite areas in La Union, the Darigayus Cove, sorry, which is a fishing village. Um, And it's also known for its white sand and reefs. There's also, I've heard, uh, secret surf spots. Um, 
depending on the season. And on October 2018, um, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources issued an environmental compliance certificate to the pro to the proponents. Um, so basically, if the environmental compliance certificate is issued, they are now allowed to build the coal-fired power plant, even though they don't have the business permits to operate it. So at this time, they didn't have a business permit. So at this point, we shifted um, our efforts from um, not we didn't just have one effort anymore. It wasn't just straws. It wasn't just pawigans. It wasn't just um, plastics and waste management. It was about the coal-fired power plant that was a looming Goliath in our midst. And um, the interesting thing about this project is that it's it can spew up to 70 to 150 kilometers of coal um, ash to the air. And that includes, um, if you look at the map, it, uh, that includes not just La Union, but the southern part of Ilocos Sur, Baguio, um, uh, the Lingayan Gulf, so part of Pangasinan, and our neighboring, um, our neighbors in uh, CAR, the Cordillera Administrative Region. So everyone was really freaking out. Plus, the surfers were pretty pissed about it because La Union has always been a tourism area and a playground for us. And we that's when we decided as a group to come up with Coal Free La Union. So it's a movement that was actually pushed by Greenpeace. And at that point, these guys, so Greenpeace, um, the Coalition to Protect the Beauty of La Union and Save Luna. So, so from 2015, 2015, 2016, 2017 to 2018, I was doing mostly the sexy part of La Union Souls marketing. So we were doing events, we were... Um, we're doing events, we were doing more events, and we were having more people and do more events. But by 2019, we needed to do something else. Um, so as a lone representative of the millennials during this time, mm -hmm. um, I started uh, lobbying. So I was with... Um, so on the picture, you can see um, Bishop Presto. So it's uh, La Un he's La Union's bishop for well for the Catholic Church. Um, we also have Sir Bob, who is an uh, is from the academic side, and until his dying breath, um, he had cancer and he passed away in 2020. So this is him. Um, he was teaching high school children and elementary school children about the effects of a coal-fired power plant. We also have uh, Sir Bing Gieb. So Sir Bing Gieb was, is a retired um, environmental scientist from the state of California. So he used to work for the federal uh, government of California uh, and his work was like the work of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. So he was in California for 20 years, checking papers, making sure that everything was in check. And he decided to volunteer um, to help protect La Union from the coal plant by using his um, specialization of being um, a marine scientist uh, to help us check all the papers that the proponents were showing us. We also partnered with the Philippine Movement of Climate Justice, which were a bunch of, uh, they were social activists and also lawyers were part of the team. And they helped, they helped La Union with the legal side of the matter. By this time, when the ECC was issued, all events after were mostly on protesting the coal-fired power plant. And we even had a video 
I remember. So for 2019, when we found out that um, the environmental compliance certificate was issued by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the first people to stand up after the locals or the seniors of the group, the Manila Surf Association, together with members of the La Union Surf Club, created a created an event called Stand for Surf Town. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a three, was it a three or four day? It was a week long surf competition um, aiming to help educate and to spread the news faster, not only to um, people in the Philippines, but surfers around the world. And at this point we had, after that, the next thing that the team did together with, um, it was actually Greenpeace and uh, Philippine Movement and Climate Justice, as well as Save Luna and um, the Save Beauty, Save the Beauty of La Union Coalition made the La Union Climate Action Parade. Um, and they had a big music festival um, together with uh, protest walks. So it was similar to if you watch uh, the trial of Chicago 7, it was similar to what they did. Um, but there was no trial. So we were just basically um, uh, really pro protesting, actively protesting against the coal-fired power plant. By this time, all the major events of San Juan, so all the major parties, had the messaging that coal is not cool. Um, even Fox, uh, Fox uh, Life and um, National Geographic Channel joined us in our cause and, act and made an event that was to inform people, that, to inform people who were partying with us about this threat and that they might not be able to party here anymore after 2022 um so all of the events were focused on the pawikans and with the pawikans was also the issue on the coal-fired power plant mm -hmm. by 2019 um everyone was already making their own events um and most of the events of business owners whether they were active members of the movement or they were supporting the movement, they just adapted La Union's soul's goal and the guidelines that we made um, into their own businesses. So at 2019, I became the president of San Juan Restaur Resort Restaurant Hotel Association. And that's when we started to actually work more closely with the business owners and not only did we make events we were actually looking for business solutions so we partnered we started um talking with suppliers such as echo nest um so echo nest is a supplier of biodegradable real biodegradable um takeout containers uh the material they use come from plas the plastic like materials are made out of cassava um some of them were made from like there was some of them were made of rice um and basically they were really biodegradable they weren't made of paper um and that's what we began doing with um the business owners at this point so we were trying to tell them hey you can use this or you can reuse reusable containers um so laura was very active in um, at this time, showing uh, business owners, we elected her as the vice president for environment for San Juan Resort Restaurant Hotel Association. And she started almost immediately trying to bring these, um, these suppliers in. And then we were meeting with business owners about these products that are more sustainable. By 2019, we had more people jumping on the bandwagon of no, no straws. So they were using paper straws, metal straws, or bamboo straws at this point. Um, one of the biggest resorts here were issuing environmental fees for takeout containers. Um, 
So it was really a team thing for everyone. It was a collective. And of course, by 2019, we also had the Southeast Asian Games. Um, and the Southeast Asian Games was... Uh, so San Juan hosted the Southeast Asian Games for surfing. And I actually... Uh, I wasn't a volunteer. I was employed by the Southeast Asian Organizing Committee as one of their um, coordinators for La Union. So I was um, mostly handling the venues and making sure that everything was logistically ready when, when the event and the suppliers come in to put it up. So at this point, we were at the center of everything. And the thing was we won I think we won around, was it six gold medals? I'm yeah, not sure. I think it was like six gold medals for the Philippines. Yeah, for surfing. By the mm -hmm. way, for the Philippine team, half of our um, athletes for the surfing Philippine team are from La Union, particularly wow. um, a lot, some. I think four of them are from this barangay, the barangay I live in, and one is from Baknotan. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so at this point, 2019, this was December, we had the zero, uh, the plastic problem, we had the Pawikan advocacy, we had a coal plant happening, and then we have a Sea Games. Um, I'd actually want to show you one of the things that um, our creative team did and released okay. after the Sea Games. So it's the video. Okay. Kulupan kasi, pinatayo yun, 20 minutes from here. Sa Luna yun, ha? Mm. So, sasurf din kami sa may baktotan. Ang lapit niya. Lagi po ako nagpupunta sa, sa area na yun. Marami akong kaibigan doon. The beach is so great. Yung industry, yung mga tao mag, mababait. Of course, it will give uh, job opportunities to the people. But, in the long run po yan, mapapahamak yung lugar. Not only yung Luna, but the La Union as a whole. Siguro okay siya para sa livelihood ng community doon. Kung iisipin lang natin yung short-term goal. Pero kung yung long-term, makakapekto siya sa health ng community. Siguro naman yung mga investors o yung mga taong gustong magpatayo nito, they have good intention na ito develop the area, parang ganyan. Pero siguro kailangan natin i-weigh kung ano yung magiging effect niya. Effect. Ang masama dyan sa health ng mga tao, at saka hindi maganda para sa surrounding at saka sa turismo dito sa La Union. Sayang yung surf spot natin na secret spot. Bago, bagong tuklas tapos isipin mo ilang years lang biglang masisira na kagad. Yung minimina nila, yun yung sinusunog nila para magkaroon ng kuryente yung call na yan. Limang basket report yun. So napag-fit yung Imagine nga kung gaano sila, kung gaano kadami yung tubig na kukunin sa dagat and then ibabalik. In six months, nandito na sa atin. So, matay na yung mga corals natin. Yung area dito, alam naman natin, tayong lahat dito, dito na namumuhay eh. Diba? So, paano na lang kung may mangyari? Ito yung pinagkakitaan natin eh. Sila, nagpatayo sila doon, sila lang yung magiginabang. Hindi tayo ang mag-operate sila dito with their own benefits. Tapos pagkatapos nun, iiwan tayo dito. Paano tayo? Nga na. 
okay na nga tayo dito sa atin. Paano pag biglang napatayo na tapos nga sira na. Wala na, wala na mangyayari sa atin dito. Sira na lahat. Mas sira yung dagat ay doon. Kasi chemical yun. Not safe. Tsaka isang, isang dagat lang yan. Isang karagdan lang yan. Isang agos lang yan. Isang agos na papunta dito sa atin. Wala na. Tapos na tayo. Wala na. Wala na tayong ganito. Maraming idudulot yan na uh, masamang epekto. Kung hindi man, hindi man natin abutan yan, syempre yung mga next generation, especially ako, may anak ako. Unti-unti nilang pinapatay yung mga tao kasi magkakaroon ng mga sakit. Pati mga batang paslit. Mami po ako, so ang magiging kawawa nito is yung mga next generation natin. Huwag na natin isipin yung para sa atin eh. Para sa kinabukasan na lang ng mga susunod na. So, ang gawin na lang natin is mag-freak ni God na huwag nilang ituloy. Kasi para sa mga kinabukasan ng mga anak natin ito eh. Kasi pag natuloy yan, wala nang kinabukasan. Pati mga anak. Nakasakit lahat ng mga tao. Wow, actually Tina, I was really affected by by that video. I didn't imagine that really um, that coal plant can really generate that much waste, which can really be um, a damage to the lives of the people and the ecotourism of, of course, La Union. So I'm just wondering because you really, really gave us a, a very deep insight from your activities from 2015 when you started in La Union all the way to 2019. And of course, right now, 2020, it's the... COVID pandemic uh, year. So yes. I'm very interested, um, before the pandemic happened, um, what were the challenges faced by La Union in terms of its uh, environment and tourism aside from uh, this um, situation that you've also uh, mentioned in the video? Um, we had, at this point, there were a lot of infrastructure projects that mm -hmm. didn't go through public hearing. One of them was actually 2019. It was the road widening project of the Department of um, Public Works and Highways. Mm -hmm. um, and here at our town, we had a rainwater drainage uh, project. And they were supposed to cut a lot of trees. It was an issue back in 2019, around, I think, starting June of 2019, people were protesting against cutting of the trees and talking to their um, governments of possible um, compromises or maybe project mm -hmm. innovations, if possible, to go around the trees or do things. And there were a lot of successful stories, like for Cebu, instead of having a road widening. So they still widened the road, but they kept the trees intact. So they had islands for certain um, roads. Um, we also had, so before COVID, immediately at, before COVID, so I was in, this was around March, uh, March 10, I think. I was at multiple public hearings because um, they started cutting the trees. Uh, we had nine century-old acacia trees lined oh up gosh. here. And one night, um, so last year I tried talking with the government, uh, tried to have a public consultation, and they said that they'll think about it. Okay. So after a while, I was just waiting for a response. Suddenly, around February, mm -hmm. Before February 14, like a thief in the night, they started cutting trees. So they did have a tree cutting permit issued by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources that they could cut these trees. But the thing was, so this was around, I think, 
this was March of this, February of this year. But last year, I was already trying to talk to them. And since they didn't respond to me, I just like waited. Um, so I waited and waited. And just after a while, accepted that these trees were going to be cut. So February, they started cutting the trees. And the local community was enraged. Um, they were taking photos. They were posting on social media. They messaged me and asked me, like, Tina, I thought that, I thought that you were able to talk with them. And I told them that I did talk to them, but they didn't listen because I was just one person during that public hearing. I was, there were actually three of us. It was me, mm -hmm. um, uh, Bing Gieb, the environmental scientist, and Laura, who was with me. And they weren't residents of Orbis Tondo, which is, was my barangay. So I was alone at that meeting with two of my friends, both consultants, both marine, um, and, marine and environmental scientists. And we were at that, at that hearing um, 2019. So I think it was around August of 2019. And we... I tried to really talk to the provincial government to not just save the trees in my barangay, but also think about the trees in the other towns. But at that point, I couldn't really do anything because I was just alone. So February, um, the community were the ones who pushed me. They said, Tina, they, they're cutting this this tree, I grew up with this tree. This tree is older than my grandfather. That's what they told me. And I'm like, someone needs to come with me because I was at that point really burnt out. I, uh, it was Sea Games. I was working on Sea Games after. By January, I was just exhausted. Um, so they did come with me. Around 30 people from the community went with me, and it was the first time that I actually experienced having this whole group. Even mm -hmm. the sign-up sheet and the protest was made by Marley, which I will actually show to you later. Okay. And that was just one of the things that we did, the trees. Um, of course, there was the plastic problem, so we were continuing with that. Um, and the sound. Um, sound was really a problem here. Um, there were a lot of bars and establishments who played loud music. So people were starting to be very or more sensitive to noise. And we were trying to talk with um, business owner to business owner to try to ask them and to try to incorporate a set of guidelines on the noise pollution, have a better relationship with our neighbors, um, guidelines like, like that for the association. Mm -hmm. On the other side, we were also doing um, legal, uh, legal remedies, that's what they call it, legal remedies for the coal-fired power plant. So we had lawyers working on that. We wow. still had um, we still had the events happening, but okay. pre-COVID, since La Union Soul became the cool thing, taking care of the environment became the trend. Oh, okay. um, establishments were making events on their own um, that incorporated environmental um, environmental marketing. <laughs> Wow. Right, that's just okay. a new term. So, but basically, so I guess more, people really were becoming more aware of what's yes, happening in La Union. Yes. They were really getting into it. So that's why in 2019, pre COVID, I was already passing the crown of doing the sexy idea of marketing and events to each and every establishment mm -hmm. um, and business owner. And they were doing everything on their own already. It was like the start of La Union Soul, which was 2015, there was a seed. Um, the seed was actually just knowing that we need to take care of nature. I think that most people have this at the back of their head. They know that we do need the, the 
we do need nature because if you think about it, when you're so stressed at work, when you're in the city, so stressed at work, where do you, what do you usually do for your vacation? Well, of Is course, it, we think of the beaches. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, nature. Nature so, thing. Um, behaviorally, if you look at it, people actually go back to nature after mm -hmm. being in the city. It's like a comfort for people, a comfort for tourists to go back to nature every time they want recreation. So what La Union Soul did was basically just water that seed until it grew in each and every one of the community. Um, and the funny thing was, it was at that point, it wasn't even a brand. We did it, we never had merchandise or we never sold merchandise. Um, it was more of talking with people and try to get them in. And it wasn't, it was a collective effort. So it was because of the groups of the people I showed you, they were just continually sharing the story to their friends, their family, until it just snowballed into this whole movement. Okay. So that happened. So think, yeah, so I think that's really where you planted the seed. And then, of course, those various activities and those various partnerships that you were involved in really played a role on how you really brought up sustainable tourism in La Union. And of course, taking care of the environment and of course, the people as well in La Union. So I'm also very excited to learn since, of course, you mentioned that pre-COVID, there were already infrastructure problems. There were already um, some hearings that you were been doing and you've been actively really um, fighting for the, for the essence and, of course, the welfare of La Union. So right now, since the pandemic has already hit La Union and, of course, the whole entire Philippines, um, what do you think are the current um, practices or safety practices that uh, La Union is doing to really protect um, its people and its nature given that it's pandemic? What are the current um, health protocols? Because I'm sure all of our guests are interested to know also, especially those who love surfing, they really want to know how to really um, practice safety and of course be secured to prevent more cases from increasing in um, La Union. So what are the current health practices there? So for the current health practices, we do practice um, the basic health standards required by the Department of Interior Local Government and the Interagency Task Force. So mm -hmm. it's basically similar to what you have in Manila where there are um, uh, acrylic um, acrylic walls between um, bars, for example. There are there's social distancing. We require masks to be worn. Um, for tourists, we cannot receive tourists yet. So we can only receive tourists from Region 1 and, um, and Baguio. Okay. Um, that's it for the moment. For, for the moment. Okay. For the moment. So we don't know if things will change in November. Um, for surfing lessons, it's still not allowed. So mm -hmm. we are trying to work with our La Union Surf Club uh, to come up with um, guidelines that can be approved so that um, at least we can, at least the local community, the surf int instructors could have their livelihood back. So that's one of the projects that um, we've done. Um, what else? Other forms. You do need to have all your permits ready if okay. you do decide to come here. But of course, we can't accept you. I don't know where you'll go. But the permits <laughs> that you need would be um, a, a travel authority identifying if you're staying as a tourist or um or coming here for official business. So we don't allow tourists at the moment for San Juan in particular, but mm -hmm. for other parts, other towns in La Union, which is San Fernando, um, there, there are 19 other towns plus the city. Um, they are allowing uh, tourists to go there. So it's okay. just really um, San Juan that doesn't allow it. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 no. So basically, 
no, no, no. That's not that that hasn't been signed yet. I just saw the draft. But the one signed, the one for uh, on September twenty three, which I can share with everyone after this webinar, is that we can't allow tourists to stay here uh, from outside Region One and Baguio. Oh, okay. but we can accept tourists from Region One and Baguio. So I, I mentioned this more than four times because we have seen people try to come in from Manila yeah. uh, and um, you know yeah that's why I think I they became excited it. I think they became yeah. excited when it was already in general community quarantine and they can yes. travel so I think mm -hmm. they got excited yeah. but I guess you have enlightened us that there's still some restrictions there and it's yes. good to know that um, the basic health protocols are intact, especially for the people of La Union. So everyone is still safe and sound there just to really keep um, the cases of COVID-19 to a minimum level there in yes. um, La Union. So I'd also like to ask um, Tina, since we're also mm -hmm. talking about having sustainable tourism and of course um, sustaining it and really thinking of, uh, of the long-term um, impacts of it, what do you think are the ways that we can achieve uh, balanced ecological and sociological tourism in the region, aside from those that you've mentioned a while ago in, in your previous slides? Um, to maintain a balance, economical and um, environmental. So it, it's both uh, a means for um, livelihood and also a means for um, profit so it's livelihood profit and how do you balance it out with the environment it's really about um, for business owners it's really about incorporating um, more environmentally progressive um, innovations to your operations so mm -hmm. what that means is for example I'm a business owner um, for our business, we do not use straws. We provide glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, uh, water uh, water refilling stations instead of selling water in water bottles. That's one of the things we do. Mm -hmm. We, as much as possible, try to do the basics of waste management. Um, which is uh, trying to first um, identify which is biodegradable and um, non-biodegradable, just doing that as the basics. Um, having your own facility, trash bins, more okay. trash bins, um, science in your establishment. Mm -hmm. um, it's also about having infrastructure in your establishment that would manage um, sewage. So okay. that was one of the problems that I've not yet mentioned. It was actually wastewater uh, from establishments going to the beach. And in 2017, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources became very strict um, with resorts when it comes to like wastewater uh, mm -hmm. coming out of the establishment. So it's really putting those infrastructure in place when doing your business and thinking about it beforehand. Yeah. The operations is really the center of, of this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing was learning about nature like learning about your environment and trying to instead of rebuild the environment mm -hmm. it's trying to adapt because adapting a lot of people there are um, some engineers that are against this they like to build things but when you build a project you have to look at you have to study hydrology if you're doing a rainwater um mm -hmm a rainwater drainage. You have to really study the environment before you put infrastructure there. Yeah. Um, because you need to know where the water is coming from. You need to know where the water is 
go gonna go out to prevent the floods you need to know everything about the environment in the during the different seasons in a year because not everything like everything changes for example our sands are shifting sands they call it shifting sands um during summer we would have long stretches of sand in the beach but yeah. during december all that um the the water comes nearer to mm -hmm. our uh to our property line so that's mm -hmm. something that they do need to learn when doing infrastructure um it's also about trying to work with your government um local government so the past from 2015 to 2018 it was doing more of our own thing doing more private events trying to make um sustainability or sustainable tourism cool but after a while if we really wanted to create a solution we did have to like put a foot into um lobbying so that's yeah. another thing that we had to do so mm -hmm. we really told our uh, local government and provincial government and even regional government agencies like DPWH um, that we wanted to be part of the project. So we wanted to be there as consultants. We wanted to know what the project is about because honestly, we are for development. So we are for the build, build, build project, but we wanted to have build, build, build projects that were environmentally sound, that had, that were um, really um, studied. And that was one of the things that we were working on for at least for 2020 before COVID happened. Yeah. Uh, so those are just a few things that we have to do to balance profit, livelihood, and environment. Yeah, um, and I, I really like what you mentioned that it's also building habits and building connections. Yes, like for example, really when happy. you mentioned that there's there are no straws in La Union, I mean, it's already you building the habits of the people so that when they go back to the city or where they came from, mm -hmm. they could already practice it. And those small habits can really lead to like a bigger impact in their community or where where they're living right so i also like that and i think i have to agree that partnership really matters especially mm -hmm. when you're trying to push for for something that is bigger than yourself or mm -hmm. of course you're carrying um la union as a whole so of course you really need to establish those partnerships to really get yourself out there and have some simple steps moving forward so yeah and of course tina i'd also like to ask uh our last question for tonight so of course many people are, are i'm sure inspired i'm um, hearing this talk tonight me personally i'm also inspired to really ask um as a simple citizen even though we're not in la union right now or even though we cannot visit i mean what other ways can others like me or our guests for tonight who are watching live how can they really help support the different movements that you mentioned to have a more developed surf town La Union amidst the pandemic? How can how can they help the region? Um, actually, so I'll present um, the next part of the project. Um, so I have more slides, but let me finish it because the other slides actually answer your question. Okay. So, um, so stepping back, um, we did have to... Uh, change our priorities when COVID happened. So we did help a lot of people um, during the COVID 2020 pandemic, especially during March. Um, we raised these amounts and we gave them directly to the community while also raising the said amounts to um, our frontliners, our medical frontliners, our government frontliners. Um, and in fact, we were partnering with, for example, these guys. J.R. Dizon is um, is a math um, major. Plus, he's also an urban planner. Um, he actually helped 
this other guy, Gino Mabalot, is our municipal risk disaster um, officer. And we used our skills during COVID to help each other improve the system. We realized during the during the pandemic that, hey, we can and we need to work together because there's a problem with the current system. There must be a way for us to help each other. So this is um, one of the things that uh, they had made together. So as you can see on the left side, the map was very inefficient when it comes to routes. So what JR did, was he made um, the map according to the routes, making it more efficient for each barangay to um, go to the public market because um, one of uh, the problems here in San Juan is we don't have a mall here. We don't even have a grocery. So if you're business owners or uh, investors, we do need those. <laughs> um, and some updates during COVID is that out of the 80 establishments that we have um, as members of the association, only 30 are at an operational um, and limited uh, basis. So 50 of them, 20 are permanently closed, 30 are temporarily closed. 970 people were unemployed. Just, that's just our members. But we're also looking at people who aren't our members so when we completed that we are actually projecting between a thousand five hundred to two thousand who have lost their jobs during the pandemic for our um town um but because of the efforts that we did we really tried to give back to the community during covid um the first people uh, that we thought of was the people who had a daily wages like they didn't have monthly wages they made money based on what they sold for the day so that's why we really did fundraising so that we can at least provide more um more relief goods for them and then one of the i guess a progress report that i can say is that during the pandemic, there were no riots, unlike in Manila. Um, yeah. <laughs> there were only a few incidents of theft, maybe a handful, but it wasn't serious. Um, for San Juan in particular, we had mostly the following uh, violators of public market schedules, which we tried to manage using the new um, public market map. Um, there were violators of the no parking on the highway. So violators of the curfew, because mm -hmm. um, since no one can can leave their houses, people sometimes, I think, went around and just did um, uh, gatherings, maybe. So because there were violators of curfew, I, didn't know, I don't know why they're out. Um, and then maybe traffic accidents. We do have a lot of traffic accidents because um, one thing that we notice um, together with the experts is when the road widened, people actually started speeding. Um, they cut down the trees, widened the road, people start speeding, more accidents. So that was um, one of the things. Uh, one progress report was that while we were um, having public hearings, um, the trees, the two trees that were left were spared. So the DPWH actually um, built around the tree for the drain. So that's good news during the chaos. This was June 13. I didn't really expect them. I was actually expecting the department to cut the trees while everyone was afraid of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but let me show you the results. From 2016 to 2020, uh, um, sustainably stoked efforts um, uh, with uh, partnering with Laura, we had a big increase in members from 2004 to 2014 to 2017 to 2019. And by 2019, 
most of our members were very active already. By 2019, 51 of 80 establishments were part of straw wars. So they were establishments were taking out straws. Um, 42 of 80 shifted, sorry, to reusable plastic takeout containers. 23 out of 80 shifted to biodegradable takeout containers. This was more expensive. Um, 17 of 36 beachfront establishments have shifted to Pawican friendly lighting. This is yellow, red, orange uh, lighting. 14 out of 36 beachfront establishments were following Pawican friendly sound um, or music controls. So um, people were really shifting, and the progress was quite. Um, you can see it in the progress. In 2011, Kurma started, they started with around 2,400 eggs because they started with just a small portion of the beachfront. At its peak in 2014, um, Kurma was already getting around 6,000 hatchlings release. However, when um, business began booming in Urbistondo in San Juan, surf town La Union, the hatchling rate dropped to 1,600. After we launched um, the movement and we tried to get everyone on board, um, by 2018, we had 2,000 eggs. And 2019, we had 4,000 hatchlings released. So was the movement effective? Always look at the numbers, and the numbers never lie. Next was the expansion. So from 2015 to 2016, you can see it here, the green parts. This was just the areas covered by Korma. So these were only the only like areas where people were actively looking for Bawikans. By 2016, it was slowly growing, 2017, 2018. 2019 by 2020 we have the shoreline of three cities uh three towns uh, two towns including the city of san, Fern san fernando as well as it, it's not on the map but uh, as well as uh a korma program in ilocos norte so i'm not sure if it's ilocos norte or ilocos Sur, but basically it's somewhere out of our town so was it successful? Numbers never lie. And yeah. for Coal Free La Union, so this was the funny part. Okay. Um, when the ECC was released on October, on, the, on November 8th, Link, which are the kids against, uh, the kids for protecting the environment, signed a manifesto opposing the coal energy plant in Luna, La Union. 26 November of 2018, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines in La Union passed a resolution committing lawyers committing to oppose and stop construction of the coal plant in the province. By January 2019, the Philippine Sur Surf Association, um, including MSA, including um, the La Union Surf Club, have joined the protests, creating multiple surf competitions with the goal of raising awareness on the issue. By the 7th of February, the Catholic Church, through the La Union bishops, releases their call and prayer for the project proponents and leaders to rethink their plans and work for development of renewable energy sources instead. By the 11th of March, the municipality of San Juan um, through our mayor and vice mayor, passed a resolution for a coal-free, renewable energy-friendly municipality. What that means is that here in San Juan, um, coal-fired power plants and um, similar projects would not be allowed to be built in San Juan. Um, on the 14th of March, um, with... Uh, my leadership, we actually released our stand and declared our opposition with the coal plant 
to do this, which was one of the reasons why it took me a while, was I had to ask for a votation if the members would actually allow me to release a manifesto. Um, it was very democratic, and we got a unanimous yes, we're, we're opposing it. By the 6th of May 2019, the Supreme Court of the Philippines ruled in favor of the consumer groups by effectively voiding the power supply agreements. So what that means is that um, while they can start building the coal plant, they're not allowed to operate it um, because the Supreme Court revoked their proposal. By the 15th of July, more towns were... Um, joining in so it was not just like a protest this was actually local governments opposing the project so we had the municipality of san gabriel signing a resolution directly opposing the la union coal energy plant in luna la union and by the 28th of august 2019 maralco withdrew the globe the proponents of power supply um, agreement application in light of the Supreme Court ruling. By the 29th of August of last year, the Energy Regulatory Commission had dropped the power deals of Meralco with three entities following a Supreme Court ruling, mandating firms to subject such agreements to public bidding. Basically, what the Supreme Court saw was that for the Luna coal-fired power plant, they were, um, it was a technical miss for them. They did not, um, they did not go through the bidding process. So, um, so yeah, so that's why they were stopped. So, as you see, for the Coal Free La Union movement, we may have sort of won the battle, but. Um, the war was a different thing. We wanted not just for La Union to be coal free, but all the other towns to be coal free. And there were a lot of other projects um, involved. So moving forward together, I'll be presenting our next moves um, for La Union. So we call it Hello Surf Town. So I know everyone misses Surf Town, right, Jem? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, so we decided to create an outlet where everyone can check up on us. And hopefully, because every week we do have new guidelines, hopefully one of the weeks where we have new guidelines, we can actually welcome you guys. Mm -hmm. um, so Hello Surf Town is is and would be a trusted source of information that is relevant to the community and the tourism sector of the town. We want to invite everyone to re reconnect in La Union because we believe that to live an inspired life, one must reconnect with the community, the environment, the self, and the soul. And our vision was and is and will be um, to be a definitive guide to an environmentally sound, sustainable, and profitable travel destination. So this is where we um, see the balance. Our mission is to establish a guide that features surf town as a model for environmental practices, economic inclusiveness, and sustainable tourism. And we have three objectives. It's first to become a, one of the voices that advocates for the protection of the La Union environment, natural resources, and wildlife. Um, number two, create economic opportunities for the local surf town community. And number three is to attract, educate, and retain tourists who are respectful and mindful of our, our surf town culture, our environment, our community, and our economic enterprises. And to do this, we'll be um, launching a website. It's going to be on November 15. And we'll be looking at, um, we'll be offering articles and stories. Um, we we'll, might have an online booking platform that's still on the wow, works. Wow, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, an up-to-date surf town map and a La Union surf gallery because 
besides the surfing, um, during the ECQ, since we were we were allowed to go around, we discovered that there are bike routes here in La Union. There are more um, tourism destinations that we have yet to discover. So these are stories we want to share with you directly. And our content would first be, so it would be one place to have the safety protocols, to have sustainable tourism advocates, health and wellness, food and surf. It will have articles, surf films, documentaries, blogs, and more locally produced uh, and locally produced by creatives in our community. Um, but for the first phase, it would really be about um, how to live in the new normal because this is something that a lot of us are having a hard time with. Um, our featured articles would be um, travel, accommodations, uh, food, uh, do's and don'ts during the pandemic, safety guidelines. Um, content would include sustainable tourism, climate change, um, the turtle species, uh, beach cleanups, and um, some lifestyle changes that you can do as an individual so you don't have to lobby you just have to skip the straw uh, these are things that we want to help people learn and help people understand um, and we'll also look a lot um, and have articles about food wow. and um, it's because for 2025 as you've seen in the video um, the provincial government of La Union wants um, La Union to be the center of agritourism. So mm -hmm. that means we are not just producing um, vegetables and fruits um, to export, but we're also um, using it to promote our tourism. So we're known for our grapes, for our tobacco, um, and we are already like a lot of um, farmers and um, those who are learning how to garden are going into natural farming methods um, without using fertilizer, uh, chemical fertilizers. So that's um, one thing that we're looking at where, of course, there would always be surfing, the lifestyle, um, and basics like surfing etiquette. One of the problems that we have is that um, a lot of uh, tourists, especially um, people like, especially Caucasians, um, those who come here just for the surf, some of them are actually quite rude. Not just Caucasians, we have had other, um, like we had Koreans and Chinese surfers. So we would want to teach um, surfing etiquette together with the local surfers here um, so that there would, so that surfing could be safer because having etiquette isn't just about having manners on, yeah. on, the, on the lineup. It's actually a matter of life and death for a lot yes. of people because it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's um it's a it's quite a dangerous sport if you think about it. So having etiquette would not only keep you safe, but it would lessen the drama of you know having fights because of drop-ins yeah. and so on and so forth. We will also look at health and wellness. So um, a lot of people have made brands um, such as so we have a yoga studio here which um, you do yoga by the beach. It's called um, Duyan Yoga. Um, we also have a lot of um, articles on mental health. We will be having um, yoga instructors have meditation classes, which we will show online um, and other um, other activities and content on health and wellness and the funny thing or maybe not funny but the inspiring thing about hello surf town is when we called for this project um all the creative teams that were that used they all used to be corporate slaves in the city 
<laughs> they all they all went and committed time and their skills wow. to make mm-hmm. things make this happen. So this is why this um, project is content driven. Um, the aim is really to build a culture that is um, sustainable for everyone. Um, so we'll be launching on the 15th of November and have um, the other two phases um, by next year. But the first batch would be articles. And we would like to invite you to um, support us by having a pledge. Um, so our pledge campaign is uh, for us to, to help us um, make La Union an environmentally sound, sustainable, and profitable profitable travel destination um, we would like to be your guide and the main pledges can come in different forms so it's either a written agreement between la union and the bearer to uphold um, the mission vision and manifesto of the community so it's as basic as throwing your face mask in the proper bin so these are things that we would like to request from the tourists in the future because with the tourists who come here from other areas, one of the major problems that we are facing right now is face masks on the beach. And it's very frustrating because we had we had gotten rid of straws, but we now have the face mask problem. So that's a current yeah. COVID problem that we have. Mm-hmm. So the pledge would also include uh, vows towards yourself, um, the community, and your soul. And we ha- we do have a fun pledge. So um, we're still uh, tightening the details for this, but we are accepting um, donations from brands and sponsorships from um, private individuals so that we can raise funds in support of the project because um, while this project is an advocacy, while Hello Surf Town is an advocacy, um, we do ensure that all the content is of top quality. So we do pay our creative team. We believe in um, proper compensation, and that means um, fundraising on our end. And we are looking for brands. We are looking for partners. Um, um, so I do hope that this would be a channel for that. Yeah. Um. So that's okay. it. So all thank right. you. Okay, so I think all of our guests tonight are very, very inspired to really support your causes. I mean, before we end, Tina, of course, anything that you'd like to promote, how can they get in touch with you so that they can really support you in these causes of La Union and, of course, really sustaining the tourism and, of course, the safety protocols here in La Union? Um, we would like uh, to have a little bit of hype um we will be announcing the launch maybe through esme um okay. and our, our partner establishment so wait for that please wait okay. for it um if you are part of um any brands or if you yourself would want to um help us with the uh with this effort um you can get in touch with us uh through our uh I'll I'll send you guys a link later okay. but um yeah. you can look for it at you can add us on Facebook La Union Soul or okay. LU Soul on Facebook you can just add us and we'll put the updates there yeah um, okay all right so once again Tina we really learned a lot from La Union Soul what's happening in La Union and of course the sustainable tourism i hope that you're all safe and sound there and of course to all of our guests please make sure to also keep in touch with tina through the social media accounts that she've mentioned to support also the causes of la union soul and we'd also just like to remind everyone that who attended this webinar you can all get your digital certificates of attendance so just visit our website www.sme.ph or click on the link that we posted in the comment section below. So thank you, thank you so much again, Tina. And before this webinar comes to a close, I would like also to invite everyone who wants to learn more and increase their knowledge and skills, just visit our website at www.sme.ph 
we offer a wide range of masterclass courses, those of which you can enroll in based on whatever is relevant to your passion, career, or interest. As long as you have the time, despite this pandemic, to learn more, just visit our website, okay? So once again, this has been Jem, your host, signing off in behalf of esme.ph. Thank you so much again, Tina, for gracing our event. We learned a lot about La Union, and we really wish you the best in all of your endeavors. We hope to visit after the pandemic. And to yes. all of our audience, you've been a great audience. Thank you for tuning in. Stay safe and God bless everyone. Keep safe. Thank you.